Hi, I'm Sam with Hammer in Hand. I'm here at the Madrona Passive House, back at the same spot I was the previous video when we talked about the Rock Soul mineral wool insulation. You can see that it's now installed over the whole building. Um, there's a uh, three inch layer, or four inch layer rather, over this building, two two inch layers with the seams um, staggered so we don't get any thermal bypass through a seam all the way back to the sheathing. Uh, we've taken care to return our flashings to the first layer of the insulation rather than all the way back to the sheathing um, to make sure that we don't have a thermal bridge uh, going all the way back to the sheathing. Um, then we've got our nailers here which go right over the face with these strut-like fasten-all fasteners. Uh, these are rigid fasteners that penetrate through the sheathing and then go into the framing number an inch and a half minimum. So they form a rigid strut every two feet on center on, that will secure this batten to the building and allow very little deflection up and down. So essentially this carries the vertical load of the siding back into the frame of the building. Uh, that whole job is done by these black fasteners right here. Um, and then we've got another layer of batten going horizontally across these verticals to take our siding, which is going to be run vertically. So that's why we have two layers of batten on this building. This does allow for a really robust ventilation gap back here. Um, so we've got a nice uh, minimum three quarter. And we've maintained our gap down here at the bottom and put some insect screen across here so we can't get any bugs crawling up underneath here. Um, sometimes we leave that screen out in an urban location, but um, more and more uh, as we get more concerned about um, different types of bugs coming north, especially termites here in the Pacific Northwest, we are worried more and more about um, putting short circuits into any path that they might find entry into the building along. So um, this is something that we've emphasized a lot as we got into high performance building um, is this ventilated siding system. It's often referred to as rain screen. But the real important point here is that um, getting air to move behind the siding increases the drying capacity of the whole wall assembly uh, because we're relying on um, this to do bulk water management. This, this is a hydrophobic surface here, this mineral wool. Water kind of just beads and runs off. So any water that gets behind the siding, will, it will wet this a little bit, but most of it will run off. But we're not worried about this getting wet um, seasonally because we have such a nice ventilation space. There's air movement behind this siding, probably hundreds of air changes per hour just through natural convection and solar drive. So um, this surface is gonna dry out um, at the minimum seasonally. And that's kind of what we wanna see is the moisture content of this whole wall assembly. If it goes up, it goes up in the winter when it's wet and it comes back down and dries out in the summer. So you see the, a nice sine wave develop in terms of the moisture content. And that's a robust, resilient wall assembly. And it's all made possible by this ventilation space, which is, um, again, a crucial thing because when you take a house, like a passive house, which is virtually airtight and really thermally robust, it's a really thermally insulated wall. So. We've got a monolithic layer of insulation to the exterior. We've got uh, dense pack cellulose on the inside. So there's virtually no natural ventilation through this wall assembly. So we have to develop strategies and build them into the envelope to um, increase the drying capacity because in an old house you have natural ventilation. The walls have a tremendously large drying capacity because there's so much air movement through them. When you short circuit that air movement in the interest of saving energy, you have to develop another passive strategy here to get um, air moving across this exterior surface to be able to draw any moisture out of this assembly. So um, this is a, a key feature to this house um, and to all passive buildings um, is to have a ventilated cladding system. Um, I think that um, I wouldn't build uh, a passive building without a ventilated cladding system. It's that important. So you can see here our insulation uh, comes across the face and it actually here, this is a piece that returns back into the window. The cladding in this window is held short. The window frame is actually behind this line about an inch and a half. So we've over insulated onto the frame of the window itself. The cladding is manufactured so that it's short on the edge of the frame 
replace the wall, the window in the center of this wall assembly, bring the insulation out onto the face of the window, and then we'll run a jam piece here, which can attach into these edges of this rain screen and die down into um, this pan. So this is essentially the finished sill of the assembly. Um, so you have legs and a head on the jam piece. And what you have here is um, a fully ventilated, extremely robust siding system uh, featuring this uh, crucial uh, air gap behind 